So the next 20 minutes I will talk about uh, what Materialize is doing to assure the next level of quality inspection and uh, control. Please be seated, don't run away, because at the end of this presentation I will show some slides we have never been shown before because we yesterday filed a patent for it. Yeah. So what is Materialize doing? Yeah. Um, Materialize, we offer software and services that form the backbone of the additive manufacturing ecosystem. We work with a lot of partners, so our solutions are open and neutral, so that everybody can make meaningful uh, applications in the 3D printing world. Yeah. All right. Having said that, just a glance of what Materialize is doing. So we are uh, founded in 1990. We are 26 years on the market, only for 3D printing. We have more than 1,300 employees. We have three business units, uh, software, a medical division, and also a production. Uh, sites. We have more than 130 industrial printers in all kinds of technologies. Um, we speak your language. We are present in 21 offices in 16 countries and uh, we are the innovators that you can count on. We have uh, 100, more than 150 patents granted and uh, 185 or 86 uh, patents uh, pending. These are our partners. We work with the big names in the industry in all kinds of technologies from metal, plastic, and a, a variety of, of, uh, of printers. So what I want to tell you today is about the new product that we launched, the Materialized Control Platform and Inspector. It is a hardware controller. Why we've done that? Because we are software uh, uh, providers who make software on an embedded code. And to supply this embedded code, we need a hardware solution to put it on the market. Why have we done that? Because we believe that the growth of 3D printing will be in manufacturing. If we can go from prototyping, away from prototyping, and do manufacturing. Having said that, prototyping will be interesting and stay interesting for a variety of industries. But the growth will be if we do manufacturing. To do that, there are some needs to overcome. First of all, standardization. All kinds of printers have different standards and they cannot work together. Also, monitoring and logging. If I believe in manufacturing, I want to make sure that every data that I produce, I can store, trace, and uh, do my data crunching afterwards. One integrated solution. If I believe in manufacturing, I want to eliminate every manual step. Today, you do data preparation, you have a job file, put it on a USB drive, uh, go to the printer, find the right job file manually and start the operation. In a manufacturing environment, this is uh, uh, not possible, should be eliminated. Also an open platform. If I believe in manufacturing, I want to be able to change my printer. I want to be able to add sensors. If I want to have another camera, I should be able to do that in an easy way. Today, it's uh, very uh, closed systems and uh, not possible. Also allow R&D. Because if I believe in manufacturing, I want to explore new materials. I want to explore new hatching styles. I want to explore a lot of variety of things that today uh, I'm very close with these uh, uh, machines on the market. And last, uh, at the end, I want tools that help me to predict the quality. Um, so what is the solution that we have? Actually, we looked at the market. And if you look at the manufacturing, there is uh, an another world outside, the CNC world, um, uh, uh, milling world, and they work in this way. Actually, they have um, planning system, PLM system, MES system, so they can check the whole manufacturing system. We have something similar for 3D printing, it's called streaming solution. The next level is you go to your data preparation, your CAD file. Okay, you, this is what I want to print, I do my supports, I do topology optimization, lightweight structures, and like, but this is the file that I want to print. Then I go closer to your machine, because maybe I, I have a, a different type of machine, I have a different type of um, material. So I have a build processor, we will do slicing, uh, rescaling, uh, zoning, so I will have different hatching for upskins, downskins, inskins, etc. At the end of the day, you have a job file that comes out of it, and this job file will be printed on your machine, or the G codes in the CNC world that goes to your machine. Next level is, this materialized controller is inside your machine. It can read in the job file and then will steer your machine, steer your laser scanner, sensors and motors. This in, in gray is a platform that materialized uh, can offer to you. So now a bit closer to this controller. What is it and how have we developed it? Well, we looked at 
three different technologies, stereolithography, plastic sintering, and laser melting for uh, metal. And if you look and you make a mechanical decomposition of it, they're all very similar. They have all one or more lasers, one or more scanners, uh, sensors, and motion, typically. Yeah, a recoder, a z-axis, maybe some filling motion. And this is true for all these technologies for powder bed resin systems. Of course, it's not true for FDM, it's not true for uh, jetting. So now let's talk about laser system, powder bed resin systems. And we made the controller to fit that purpose. Now I go to the most uh, important slide, and it's a tech stage, so it's more technical. So how have we developed this controller? We did not make a normal controller on the, on the market. We improved it and made it better. So if you look today on the market and today on the machines, this is a typical architecture that you have. You have a machine control software working non-real time yeah. um, with a, a human machine interface. It has a scanner interface board. It goes to your uh, scanner and laser. You have a PLC to steer your motion and other interfaces to, I don't, know, I don't know what kind of various hardware that you have. All right, we take this, take this yellow box, and we replace it by the controller, which has another architecture. Actually, it has an embedded software on a real-time processor and also an FPGA with embedded code. Attached to that, we take the same peripherals. It's the same laser scanner, motion, and, and hardware. Um, all right, different architecture. What does it bring for me? Well, these are the comparisons. First of all, it is processing speeds. Um, if you look at the typical architecture, you're limited to the processing speed of your machine control software, typically milliseconds, 20 hertz. That works in a non-real-time environment. Whereas an FPGA can go up to 100,000 hertz, actually 1 million hertz if you like. 100,000 hertz is typically um, the limitation of your XY2100 protocol for your scanner. Um, all right, speed, that's good, but what can I do with it, with this speed? In a typical system, you can do monitoring. You can take an image after each layer, check if it was good, and if it was bad, you maybe throw it away, and if it was good, you continue. Um, with the high speed, we can go beyond that. We can do monitoring, of course, but also control. Because we have this high speed control in the, in the FPGA, we can imagine that we can have a high-speed camera, monitor the melt pool, and if we see that the melt pool gets bigger, uh, we can take an action on that. For example, we can increase laser speed or decrease laser power. So we can control the melt pool, which is actually the basis of the 3D printing process. This is the, the next level. You can only do that with this kind of architecture with a high speed. Last is closed. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, if I want to add a camera, a sensor, uh, it's difficult to do that. Uh, you need to program interfaces. Maybe you need to program your PLC, the machine control software. What we do in our system, we work with protocols. So we ask you, what kind of protocol do you have? XY2100, SL2100 for your scanner, um, Modbus, Profibus for your motor, uh, or Stepper for your motion, etc. And as long as we support this protocol, we can just plug it in and start scripting. Scripting via a Lua scripting, which is an open scripting language, like Python-like, very easy scripting. And you have access to all the data via OPC UA. It's an open architecture. So every single data that you produce, you have access. So this is about the controller. Next level is the quality. Um, what we have developed is a tool that links all the different stages from um, from your process. So we check data preparation, we check the, uh, what's happening on your machine, we take images, and we can all combine them. So you can imagine that we can take an image after your scanning of your layer, and we overlay that with actually the hatching profile of your build processor. And we can vary and check if everything is in line. So this inspector is a tool to improve and guarantee the quality of your uh, product. Actually, it's three things that we'll do. It will assist you, first of all, in, uh, in uh, building the confidence if the final part is meeting the right uh, quality expectations. Um, also, it will help to, to do some troubleshooting and, and root cause analysis, because you will, uh, you will see that something, uh, something happens, the printing is not what you've done, or it, it comes out 
uh, something that you did not expect, then it's a very difficult task to find what went wrong. So with the inspector, we gather all the different uh, information, and by doing that, we can uh, win a lot of time in finding the right root cause. Last one is also, we will help you assisting and predicting um, what if the quality will be met. So we have also tools to do, to do that. Um, and based on metric systems and based on our own experience from in-house with our 130 printers that we have on the market. So where is this inspector situated? It is based uh, uh, in, uh, in this part. In, um, so it will link the materialized control, it will link data from Magix, it will link data from the build processor and also from, from Streamix. It's an independent pro uh, product, so it's not necessary that you have the controller there. Um, but of course, it will work seamlessly with it. These are the features. Um, first of all, it's a slice viewer um, with, with various formats, with multiple um, uh, multi-optics viewer. Also, uh, image processing, so we can take all the images, make grayscales, and then predict or help you to do warping detection, recall to failure, or a tear detection. And last is also the energy density map, which we recently filed a patent for it. Actually, it takes the information from the build processor, because there you know what is the, the job file that goes out, what is the hatching strategy that I, uh, um, I've chosen, and what kind of energy, laser speed, focus that I put on each vector. Based on that information, we can um, make a simulation of the heat density that goes there. Uh, and we can make an image, 2D image, 3D image. We can go and check overlays and underlayers. And so we can make a prediction what is happening. This is the energy density map. So who can benefit from this tool, the, the controller that we have? First of all, it is every people who wants to make a machine. We want to go on the market. We have this ready available off the shelf. It is, um, so your time to market is very uh, limited. Um, you can build your own IP on top of it. So, it's, so instead of inventing the wheel, you take state of the art, and on top of that, you build your own IP um, by scripting. It's a modular approach, so we'll ask you, uh, what do you have, how many scanners do you have, how many lasers, what kind of motors do you have, and we tailor it to your needs. And if you want to go to the market, I mean, we can make a, a small or a skin down um, controller for it to make it more uh, cost efficient. Second is also R&D applications. Everybody who is doing R&D could be a new machine manufacturer who wants to explore his machine, universities, R&D people, people want to explore new materials. They can benefit from our uh, platform and also our inspector tool because you can examine the complete process. You can tailor it to your needs. You can monitor and lock all the data. Via OPC UA, you have that available. You can benefit from the real-time closed-loop uh, data and also analyze the data in an easy way by using uh, the inspector. Actually, this is uh, an image that we used an inspector for our customized uh, hip implants. Last one, if you have a machine that goes into production, what you want is um, yeah, you want an open scripting language so that your machine can behave as you like it. Um, monitor and store, track and trace all the, the, uh, uh, the information. If your part goes into aerospace or aviation into a plane, you need to be sure in which part or what are the uh, parameters that are set to print this part. Connect to by using standard protocols. It's very important if you go to a manufacturing uh, environment. And last, of course, assure the quality of the part. So remember the requirements that I posed in the beginning that they are necessary to go for a manufacturing is standardization, monitoring, logging, one integrated solution, an open platform, allow R&D and assure the quality. And we believe that the combination of materials control platform and uh, the inspector, uh, we can meet these requirements. Yeah. Next, I have uh, a use case that I want to share with you how we have used that in real life. Eh? So um, this is just an example of 3D printed insoles. Maybe you know that or not, but um, we have customized uh, insoles. Paula Radcliffe runs with it. Um, actually, we, we manufacture them. It's customized, uh, mass customization. 
um, and we give guarantees on it, so the quality is extremely important. Of course, also the speed, because we go into manufacturing, we need to assure that the, it's done fast. Um, it's typical for these insoles, uh, it's plastic sintered, but they are very fine structures um, and lightweight structures. So the objective is increase speed, but assure the correct quality. So what have we done? Um, you looked at the normal hatching parameter, maybe it's not clear, but the hatching uh, goes vertical. Uh, so they have, uh, this, this is the infill, the, the hatching style, that's a standard style, which works fine, but you will see that you have a lot of jumps. Huh? And this is the objective what we want to do. We want to reduce all the jumps. Because, so what we've used, we have the build processor. Remember, this is a build processor. You have more than 250 parameters that you can set uh, in the, the build process that comes along with the controller. So um, what did we do? We actually, we changed uh, the scanning strategy and we made contours of it. So you reduce a lot of jumps, especially for each layer. What was the outcome of it? For the scanning time for 20 pairs, we reduced scanning time from 14 hours to 9.6 hours. It's great, fantastic. However, what did we saw when it was printed? Um, there was unsinted material in there, so it was not good printed. You see here uh, the white stripes, which is not clear, but actually this is uh, material, printed material, which is not sintered. Of course, in terms of quality, it's not good. So what we use is we use the inspector to analyze the data, to see what is the root cause of it, what is happening. Actually, you see on this, the screen, we have the red lights. Actually, we give too much heat with this, with this new hatching style. And the blue lights, we give not enough heat, too much heat. We have holes, not enough heat, unsinted material. Um, this is a 3D map of this inspector. And actually, you see there's a one-on-one -on -one fit with the reality. So inspector is doing what it's predicting uh, the reality. So we have a tool that can predict the reality, so now we can play with it. We can optimize it. And so what have we done? We used the build processor um, to change the hatching styles, to change the, the contours. And also we use the benefits of the controller to use a variable focus and a variable um, uh, laser power. At that time, um, you see that based on this uh, energy density map, we came to an acceptable uh, solution that can work. What was the final result? At the end of the day, we reduced the printing time from um, 14 hours up to 10 hours. So a little bit more than 9.6, but because we changed it, but still a very good uh, reduction and uh, by keeping, um, by be keeping the quality. So this is the presentation I want to give. Thank you for your attention.